Hello and welcome to the lobby, GameSpot's weekly hangout every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific right here on GameSpot.com. I'm your host, Daniel Dwyer. Joined this week, Chris Waters isn't here. What? Oh my God, but it doesn't matter. We got the original Operation Anchorage right here, Justin Haywald. <laughs> howdy, howdy. How you doing, my friend? I'm good. And the pride of Utah, Andy Bauman. Hey, what's how, up? How are you? Great. Uh, first off, I want to talk about a little thing called 4K. Oh, yeah. Because you made a feature last week on GameSpot.com. I deep um, dove into that bitch. You did. You, you, you made a great excuse to play as many games in the workplace as possible. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm so busy. I have to guys, go play this, but it's 4K. Can play this? No? Okay, I'll do it myself. All right. Uh, all in, the, uh, all in the, the, the aim of answering one question, is 4K worth it? Uh, so, first of all, Justin, actually, what is 4K for those who are uninitiated? What the hell does this mean? I, I think that it's something from the future. Yeah. So right now we're in 2K. Yeah. We, we, you know, we were previously in 1K around 2K, the 1000s. 2K games. And we've pulled technology from 2000 years in the future, and that's <laughs> called 4K. <laughs> it, that's right. Man, right. if this stuff video games look like 2000 years in the future, I'm going to be <laughs> bummed. Uh, 4K is how many lines of resolution are we talking about? Uh, 2160. Hmm. So 2160 vertical. So it's about uh, four thir- times three, the size? It's exactly four times 1080. 1080. Okay. So you can fit four 1080 screens in one 4K, 4K screen. Yeah. All right. So you played a bunch of games in 4K last week. Yeah. Captured a lot of footage. What games did you play? Okay. I got my notes. You got your notes? Because <laughs> I played a lot, actually. You did, actually, yeah. Uh, I played Wolfenstein. Yeah. I played Far Cry 4, Project Cards, Dirt Rally, GTA 5, and The Witcher 3, which are all games I've been playing a lot lately, not in 4K. Yes. Just so I can have like a frame of reference going into it. And, and these not all games, games support that, right? Like 4K, is, it's not like you can just play an NES game. I don't, like, oh, it's 4K. Yeah, I don't know about so. that. Like, who knows? These, like, are, all games that These nati- are all games that will scale. Nat- that that natively had it in them. Well, but then whether or not the textures yeah, are at 4K like, resolution is a big question. That's a whole other right? story. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's, what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking throw it out way. But uh, I know what's going on in the settings menu. Yeah. And it'll let you select 4K. So you figure, all right. Um, before we get into yeah, how, we, how it looks, and it's how. also it's subjective though. I'll say that. Like, yeah. I had a different experience than like our say our man Josh behind the, the track. Oh, d- don't worry, we'll get into that because yeah, I want to talk to you about I, that. Let's uh, let's have a look at the technology first of all. Right. You bought you bought a couple of little treats here. So here, here's what I wanted to cover. Mm. To run 4K, we have this beast of a machine. Yeah. It's it's an Alienware Alpha, I think it's called, or something like that. Alienware Area 51. Excuse yeah. me. The Alpha is the little guy. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Uh, it's like $4,500. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It has ridiculous. three GTX 980s running an SLI, which is possibly the best 4K solution. Look at that. Nice. Here's the sexy shots that Josh Shaw took of it for the review. Three cards. Which you can find on our website. Three 980s, which is like the card right now, right? Mm. It's like the best card besides the Titan X. Yes, which we have okay. In, um, which is a single card, basically, solution for doing this super high stuff like 4K. Mm. Um, this have- is $1,000. I just looked at the price for the show. Ten fifty. One thousand dollars and fifty. Fifty. <laughs> Couldn't even shave off that yeah. fifty one just to uh, make it a nice GT, clean The nine eighties are five hundred and sixty dollars each. Each right now. Okay. So two of those will have probably outperform one of those. Right. But you're still paying a little bit more. Mm. Um, Okay, but so that's that. Yes, yeah, that, this is the problem. So this is, right? the, the cost is super high. No, no, no. And that's it's, just it's already for the graphics card. Exactly. So yeah, you, yeah. Need, you need so to you have need a, a monitor. PC, you need to have and now for the monitors. So <laughs> we did our testing on this guy, which is a Acer, as you can see. Thank you, Justin. Uh, gaming monitor. 28 inch. 28 inches, uh, 4K. 60 hertz. So okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, and it has this thing called G-Sync, right? And I don't want to get in too deep into that, but it adds about $230 to the cost of the monitor. G-Sync. G-Sync. It's you can get this monitor for $450 without G-Sync. Okay. And you can get it for 680 something 680 Four dollars with G Sync, which is, is it, a big is, difference. What is the G Sync? Is it some sort of? Okay, so G Sync works with other uh, Nvidia G4 stuff. Yeah. yeah, Nvidia stuff, and it kind of it makes it so if your monitor drops, if your frame rate drops below mm. the refresh rate of the monitor, say sixty in this case, if, if you're running like forty, G Sync kind of takes over for V Sync and is doesn't skip. It doesn't make like a skippy motion. Okay, like it doesn't frame it somehow. So it, Eliminates frame tearing, frame tearing yeah. visually, and it eliminates 
the frame skipping, mm. which you can feel and see, uh, you know, in the game. And so it, and it seems to actually work. Like I've seen demos where they they show off like here's G sync on, G sync off. For, uh, you've been doing it much right. more extensively than I have. Do you feel like it actually mm. adds to it? So no, I don't think so. <laughs> right. uh, but I, again, it's, there's probably deeper stuff to get into with yeah. G sync. Um, and in our case, running SLI, there's G sync stuff in the drivers. Gives you a huge in. performance hit, okay. so I turned it off to get the highest performance I could get. And honestly, I didn't see any screen tearing on that monitor. Some people are more sensitive to that than others. That's there true. is the sort of resolution versus frame rate. But when we when we captured the output of those three G, uh, 980s or yeah. whatever on a device we had called the Shogun, which is a whole different thing, there was massive screen tearing. Oh really? On that thing, which it wasn't showing up on that monitor. So maybe that monitor is doing was something. running G-Sync and I just didn't know it. What about this guy? Okay, th this is, this is, we want to talk about a nif like, my, budget? My, my Trojan horse for this piece okay. was to talk about high frame rate. Um, okay, which is almost the, it's like the opposite side of the argument, but yeah. it, it, it goes back to like it's, the age old PC gaming debate of, do you want to have more pixels on a monitor, or do you want it to run faster? Exactly, and in the era of like LCD panels, we kind of mm. we kind of lost that. Everything's sixty. Yeah, yeah. We kind of just said sixty is the highest thing you can get. Yeah, sixty Five, frames 60. a second. Like consoles are trying to get there. Yeah, consoles have to like sacrifice to yeah. get there, right? Run I, that sixty. I remember having CRT monitors that were like one twenty hertz, like exactly. a twenty one inch, and that was like. And we were sweet. like ha happy back then, but yeah. then you could kind of like. It gave you like a headache sometimes. Oh, yeah. It wasn't perfect. Oh, it sucked. So, I yeah. one of those filters on it where if I touched it, it gave me static shock. Yeah, yeah it it's got the gauze and all that. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, But anyway, so monitors have started coming out. Uh, super high frame rate monitors, 144 hertz. So it's 144. Which is true hertz. Like you see all this BS marketing yes. all over TVs. It's like 144. They had ones for 3D. But I don't know if those were like really running at 144. Yeah. They're like doing something. There's a whole lot of stuff. They're it down the middle that. when it's 3D. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like so. It's, but this is like, yes, the frame rate is that high, and boy, can you tell the difference. I can. Hmm. Uh, again, it's subjective, right? Um, playing this game, Dirt Rally, which is a phenomenal game in early access, um, at over 100 frames per second yeah. was game-changing, literally. <laughs> like, I played the game better because I could see things happening. Like, it was smoother. I was like e-braking, power sliding, yeah. way better. I don't know why. Maybe it was just the feeling was better, and I wasn't really playing better, but it was, I, it was so cool. It's one of those games where you are so like much. looking at a, especially driving games, where you're, you're yeah. looking at a, a point in the distance, which is quite far away, so like having that little bit of reaction time might matter. Yeah, and even in Far Cry 4, just seeing the bullets hitting and like being able to react faster and yeah. it was smooth when you would do like a 180 um, was just... So cool! Like, mm. there's something unexplainable that just makes you feel amazing when you're playing it over 60. And you know, there's probably internet debates about your eye can't see past 60. Yeah. Like, totally can. 100 frames, 100 plus, all the way up to 144. It's cr incredible. I thought um, I would much rather go for high frame rate than 4K at this point. But which, I, 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 feel, I feel like this really is like about. the the blue and black, gold and it white is. dress of. F fucking video mm -hmm. games because this yeah. seems to go on forever where people are like like when I was like looking at the 4K stuff when you showed me that it was like some of it was like uh, and you like, weren't even into like Project Cars at 100 frames no that, that's the weird as thing as much as I was but I think frame rate is always where I've landed on oh. the, like I feel like the arguments on, on forums for years and now just everywhere is, is it's, it's an age old debate and it almost has something it's just so personal preference -y. Justin where do you land on this whole thing you know for me it's something that it's so new, that, and there's not a lot of games that necessarily take that much advantage of it. Mm. And look at all this extra stuff you have to, to throw onto Three it to make cards. it worth it. Like, yeah. Does that price really I mean, add to that much more of your enjoyment? I mean, yeah, because PC gaming is cool <laughs> like that, right? I, I, I want to know what's beyond 1080p 60. Like, mm. And so I wanted to achieve, I see it, and it, it's amazing. Like, t like, you know how people talk about this stuff all over? Like, 900p on the Xbox... We're hitting 63, like yeah. go really high into these consoles, and they get really passionate <laughs> about it. I kind of like didn't. I was like always not like understanding why yeah. they were getting so up. And now I'm like the one that's gonna be like, no, I need 144. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a 2K monitor that's $800 that runs at 144. That seems to be the pinnacle of pinnacle Jesus to me Christ. to get that because running 2K is pretty good on even like a 970. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, see, that's where I'm GTX. at now. I think. But, but these, these are the type of games I play actually probably matter a lot more like mm -hmm. I love shooters I love car games I love yeah action games I love city skylines what kind of game is that that probably doesn't matter <laughs> no right? that doesn't matter in doesn't matter. 60 yeah. or in 
what maybe in 4K that looks amazing. Though. I haven't. I didn't. Test I'm sure. That you know what? This is the other problem as well. I'm sure if you bought a 4K graphics card and a, and a monitor, you make sure that everything looks great. Even yeah. if it doesn't, you tell everyone, so, "Oh, it looks great." I got no buyer's remorse over here. Here's an interesting side note. We ran. I was like, Mortal Kombat's gonna be great at 100 frames per second. Yeah. It was capped at 60 because I guess really? the fighting is just yeah. that's part of the design. So right? maybe this is something we can look forward to two years down the road, or at least PC gamers can look forward yeah. to two years but down the road. This is probably gonna look. Uh, I didn't really get into like what 4K looks like. Mm. It looks. It doesn't add. <laughs> let me. T my interpretation of it, and everybody was different, of course, because we all have like different things we care mm. about. But playing on a monitor that's like 28 inches that close up, your desktop is unusable, right? Yeah. That small, everything's tiny. <laughs> but once you load up the game and stuff, uh, it scales. But then every all the objects and everything in the game take on this form that you're like, whoa, I could like grab that. So so it seems like it's something it's that's just like so crisp. Mm. It's less important for for that console experience, for that sitting in front of your monitor experience. But when we start getting into VR, when those experiences get bigger and bigger and cheaper, like then 4K feels like it's going to be incredibly important. Oh yeah, like because then you'll be right in your but face. But the, the massive part, the problem we have now with the Oculus is that they're splitting this one halfway down already, mm -hmm. like they can't get into run. That's a conversation for another day. Yeah. Andy, uh, what's the name of the feature people can watch on GameSpot of all about 4K? I think I ended up naming 4K Gaming How Cool Is It? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or something like that, and the answer is awesomely cool, especially our friend Josh in there, as I was saying before, mm. loved The Witcher 3 at 4K. Yeah. He was like... And I didn't look at it because I'm playing don't. on an Xbox One. Do and not. I don't, I don't want to, yeah. Do not. Poison the well. You cannot go back. Uh, so, yeah, so if you want to watch that feature, it's up on GameSpot.com right now. And let us know in the comments what you think. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm have, sure the PC crowd will let us know. I have more to uh, say. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. We're going to uh, check out a trailer from Mad Max. Uh, and then we're going to have a little chat about whether uh, video games are too violent in the wake of Hatred, which is coming out next week. Uh, stick around. Here's Mad Max, the game, not the movie. Savage road. Out here, a man with no wheels is a man with no hope. I know you. You're the driver. Where is the car? Your black on black is scrap. It's gone. She'll never be whole again. It's a long, dark passage. from which there is no exit. There's something brewing out there. This land is about to be scorched by Gastown wrath. In these wastelands, the righteous path is whichever road gets you out alive. Hatred, the video game, is out next week on Steam. It's not coming out on GOG.com. They won't have it on a bunch of uh, websites and articles, especially the mainstream press in recent weeks have been getting in a kerfuffle about this game, uh, which basically involves you murdering a hell of a bunch of civilians. Oh, don't do civilians, that. Civilians, man. Violence in video games. Have we gone too far? Uh, Justin, you're, you're obviously 
uh, keeping your finger on the pulse news-wise. What do you think about the kerfuffle that's surrounded hatred? Well, so, so the problem isn't that you're killing civilians. We mm. kill civilians in tons of games. Grand Theft Auto is <laughs> about... I mean, I, I mean, it's not about <laughs> killing civilians. It's more how incredibly realistic, how... For, for me, like, it, I, I had a very negative reaction to watching the trailers. You're not just kind of mindlessly bowling over people who are mannequins, mm. who are just, like, joke characters. You're shooting people in the face who are fighting again, who are saying no, who want to hold on to their lives. And it makes it kind of terrible that you're just, like, I'm going to go on a rip. Like, why are you doing it? Mm. Because I'm crazy. Got to go kill people who are crying, and you're going to shoot <laughs> them in the face. Like, So you're, say oh. you're saying it as if it's, <laughs> it's fucked up and mad. Kind of sounds hilarious to me in a weird way. <laughs> like you're kind of <laughs> laughing. Yeah. I'm kind of laughing. It does sound like it might be too... F like, I can definitely see how somebody showing this footage on, like, CNN <laughs> might oh, piss people off. It's quite baity that way. Uh, but do you think it's... Do you think, like, this sort of violence is too much? In the wake of, like, you growing up. Like, were oh. there games that you thought were too much? Because, like, we go back and think about the violent games back in the day where you think Carmageddon, Soldier of Fortune... Uh, Postal 2. I love Soldier of Fortune. I love, so yeah, Soldier of Fortune 1 was great. Was you could shoot off the limbs with a shotgun. Definitely playing that when I was like 14 or younger, maybe. Mm. So, But I will say this. When I see Mortal Kombat X, right. and I think about like, a kid playing that today, that's like way different than when we were playing Mortal Kombat. Is and my it? mom was like, hey, that's pretty gross. Like, you should... You beat your clay fighter instead. Yeah. Which, well, I mean, you know, when you punch somebody thing. and then and then three gallons of blood flow out, <laughs> but it's like, oh, it's all very pixelated and yeah. incredibly fake. But in the new one, man, when it's like kind of detailed and the animations are all good and there's like great sound design, it's like, whoa, man. As a kid, like, I guess it's not that much different because it's still cartoony. And that's stuff. that's the thing. But right? like, is it? I don't know. I can't it's tell. cartoony, but I can't it make looks that real. Like when you rip off somebody's skull, yeah. and it's like, oh, that looks like the inside of a skull and brains, and that's. <laughs> Uh, the, the, I, th I feel really weird about this because, like, it, whenever we get into this area of, oh, we shouldn't accept that or, like, we should hold games up to a higher standard, like, it, no. it, it, when no. people say that, it, like, it sounds like what, like, assholes in the mainstream media used to say about games like GTA, where, like, you're just, you're just, you're, you're, you don't understand that when we play these games, it's not, like, it's really not real. Like, look at this. This is basically a high-res right? version of Postal 1. Like, this looks like Postal 1. It's an isometric shooter with barely has any color in it, uh, and it's, you know, you're just mowing down a bunch of people. Like, does this look that bad? Like, I think the gameplay is fine. It's, it's more what I've seen in the trailers that make... Mm. Hatred less palatable, less. It doesn't seem like fun. Like I'm gonna, I'm in a playground of kind of ridiculous destruction. For yeah. me, that's never been a pull. Like I don't go into Mortal Kombat like, oh, I can't wait to see these eviscerations yeah. and all this gross stuff. But it doesn't well, bother me. Like I don't care. <laughs> that's Andy's, why you're all for it. That's why yeah. I play Mortal Kombat. I don't play well, because of yeah. fighting. Uh, I, mean, I don't play Mortal Kombat. I don't. It doesn't look draw at, me uh, in. Yeah. yeah, it's got right in his eye, right in his belly. So like. I was talking about like kids nowadays, but as an adult, like yeah, you should be able to do whatever. You should play. <laughs> well, like that's the like, thing, right? Well, why and, are we even talking it, about right? these things like, in terms of kids? Because this is an adult-rated yeah, yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And, but if the game is fun, which it probably won't which be, which might be trash, <laughs> it then kind of looks one like thing. garbage. What was but it? if it's kind of cool, and then it's like, and then it makes you like feel bad for killing. That's kind of powerful, like because it's like, oh, please don't kill me, and you're like knife in the eye. So like so, that's that's kind of. Powerful. I don't know. It's more powerful than something like Postal Two, which is a game like despite it's a joke. every yeah. But I really loved it. I, was, I thought yeah. it was so funny. And this is a game where you can. Uh, we're looking. This is Postal uh, Three here. Uh, the, 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 these are these are games where you're able to like. They're just so dumb. Like <laughs> Two, everyone thought was super violent because you could like piss in people's mouths. Yeah. There was a button for peeing. You could undo your zip and pee. Yep. You could set people on fire with a flamethrower and then like pee on them to put them out. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, on the face of it, that's kind of, look at this guy, he's just squirting. What is he putting I don't know, he's nobody squirting on these people. I don't want to know. Um, but it, it's not like it's a new thing. I mean, even looking back, like not just Postal, but Call of Duty is something that, that stands out to me that as soon as they started putting in those really violent, brutal hand-to-hand -hand kills. Like when you right. go up on a guy and you just jab a knife into his neck and draw it across, I'm like, I, I don't like to watch that in movies. Mm. I, I'm mm. not going to look away, I don't care. It's not bothering me, but like I don't seek it out. Mm. I don't want that. Or I play a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> right. That's my speed. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, first person GTA was another one where it like stuff yeah, looked real nasty, but I feel like that was 
worse because that world feels real, whereas there's nothing about hatred that makes me think this looks like anything other than just a, a psychopath's fever dream. In fact, one of the lines from the developer, or sorry, this is actually from, um, from uh, Wikipedia, uh, the player-controlled character is a misanthropic mass-killing psychopath who begins a genocide crusade uh, to kill as many human beings as possible. The developer described hatred as a reaction to video game aesthetic trends such as political correctness, politeness, vivid color, and games as art. So the top three sound like Animal Crossing, so you must be pretty pissed. Uh, whereas, like, games as art, like, in a weird way, he's making, like, an artistic statement as games as being an artistic statement with an artistic statement. Like, if yeah. that's, what, they, if that's mm. what they're doing, then this is the most pure form of games as art. <laughs> Man, I think made. when people are calling games art, I'm going to make a piece of art in the form of a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, to show on. them. Man, like, games I guess don't have to be art. It, it kind of would be interesting if, if what you're saying, like, if it does make you feel bad. Yeah. Well, that's up to... That's, that's what's great about games. Everybody feels different. Mm -hmm. like, but I'm all for pushing the envelope. Like, yeah. Uh, I grew up in an area that was super conservative, right? Mm. And so, like, I felt like I needed to push push things and offend people. And movies I made were super violent for no, yeah. like, you know, no other reason than it was cool for us. It's like, that's what we wanted to see. I want to see games like that. Mm. And, and I'm maybe calming down from that more and more as I get older. But, like, yeah, violent games, there's a place for it. Yeah. There's a time for it. Or do you um, seek that am out I going to go out and admit to everybody that oh, I guess I just did on the lobby? But, like, <laughs> am I going to go, like, tell everybody that I meet, like, hey, I love this game. Mm. It's the most violent game I've ever played. Um, no, probably not. But it's, like, something I definitely check out and be like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the point yet where a violent game can be heralded as something, like, wonderful. Like, think of something like Kill Bill, for instance, which is... Like two movies yeah. of really gnarly That's got like mainstream yeah. praise and yeah. like, hey, look at this. I don't know, The Last of Us had incredibly violent scenes and mm. the way that you murdered and eviscerated That's people. Good point. Like, yeah. but, and it's still critically lauded and yeah. a great game. That's mm. a really good example, actually. Yeah. We'll have to see if hatred is another one of those. Uh, from what I, from <laughs> I what I'm saying, I'm us. not saying <laughs> it's going to be the new Last of Us, but it could <laughs> surprise us. Uh, we don't know. I guess we'll find out uh, next week. It's available on Steam. Um, it's not available on GOG. It's on the Sora as well. GOG have decided not to. Uh, according to the developer, uh, they refuse to distribute the game. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, there might be a good game behind it, not just a bunch of uh, press and fun uh, marketing. Uh, we'll know in a couple days. But let us know what you think in the comments below. All right, next up, Cyberpunk 2077. Let's oh, talk yeah. about that in a second. We went to CD Projekt and saw some interesting stuff. Uh, and with the news today that they're not going to talk about it for two mm -hmm. years, we thought it'd be a good time to talk about it. Uh, we'll be back in a second. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, here is a uh, trailer for Battlefield Hardline Criminal Activity. See if you can spot the dead space Easter egg. Keep your eyes peeled. The cops forget. We own these streets. Sometimes, you gotta remind them. Say you wanna live faster, faster. I got what you asked for. Hands all in it like I'm picking out a raffle. Roll up, light a candle. Shot after shot, never walk that line. You'll be up all night. You gotta have each other's backs. Like the boss says, never let anyone get in your way. Earlier this week, we, uh, sorry, no, not earlier this week. Earlier today, CEO of CD Projekt Red, uh, Adam Kaczynski said, this year and the next one will be the year of the Witcher. So putting uh, credence to the idea that they won't be talking about Cyberpunk 2077 until 2017. Uh, Justin, this is a game that we first saw in January of 2013 via that mm -hmm. trailer with that rad song and that cyberpunk lady. Uh, what do you think about them not talking or unveiling anything about, else about this game for another two calendar years? I, it's in, in a way, it makes sense. They're, they've put a lot into The Witcher, not just with the DLC coming up, but expansions that they're not being completely forward with, but uh, we know those are coming as well. So in that way, it's heartening. Like They're putting a lot into The Witcher, and it's not going to be a... A, an experience which is lessened by working mm. on these other games, but at the same time, it's that's a long time to be working on this game, and 
anytime, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean something negative. It could have gone through lots of different changes. We haven't mm. seen a lot out of it. So is this something that's going to make it better? Did it go through some troubles or did it just have to be restarted at some point? I mean, you guys were at the studio recently. Is that yeah. something that they, they hinted at at all? Did you, did you get to talk to them so, about it? One of the, so we saw a bunch of stuff um, at CD Project when we were there shooting That's our, not the building. That's, <laughs> that's their studio there, right behind <laughs> it. It was built by the Soviets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, when we were at their, um, at their studio in, in Warsaw, there was a couple of little things uh, we saw. Yeah, uh, a poster mainly. Yeah, there they was this had, one room we went into where they straight up told you to stop filming. Yeah, they were like, just put your camera down, it's great, we're going to walk through here. They're still working on The Witcher, though. They weren't, like, working on uh, mm. that cyberpunk game yet, it didn't seem like. So what we but heard... the poster was, like, a mission statement. I think we talked about this before. Yeah. And it just sounded awfully ambitious. We, we sort of scanned it. They said that the, the cyberpunk team had been working... Um, I'm not sure if it was in the separate buildings. They did have another building, but they said that they pulled in everyone. Because, yeah. of course, The Witcher had been delayed, I think, three times by that stage. And they said that they pulled in everyone from that team to finish um, Witcher. Witcher Wild Hunt. Uh, and we went into one of the rooms. Yeah, there was this poster, and the two of us kind of looked at it and scanned it yeah. as much as I tried to remember as much mm -hmm. of it as possible. Uh, and the only thing I could remember was like open world role playing. So it, it kind of like sounded like Witcher 3, except. Multiple choice, like. Branches, yeah. storyline. And yeah. whether this ends up being what it is, we don't know. But you have to think, if they're going to spend all that time making that engine, making that type of game, that Cyberpunk 2077 is a good shout is going to be a game similar to The Witcher 3 in some sort of mechanics. And then you get that other audience that isn't necessarily taken in by the fantasy trappings, yeah. but loves that science fiction world. In the same way that Blizzard does with World of Warcraft and StarCraft, you get yeah. both of those audiences. Yeah, because this is like the first like big mainstream CD Projekt success. Like You've played all the other Witcher games in the past, Andy. Well, yeah. Like... Talk about trying to have not like well, have one of those hipster views about things. But, <laughs> but man, you all coming on the Witcher bandwagon now. But man, I've been there since the beginning. No, uh, but it's awesome to see them keeping to their freaking vision, man. Like mm. Witcher has been such a good game. Each time it gets even better, and they've like reached. I mean, they got a ten out of ten on our site. Like they reached pinnacle status, basically, mm. right? Um, and now they're poised to to do another game. But I think the important thing to I don't know how games are made, right? Mm. So I do know that studios. Other studios that make these quote unquote triple A games have like one team working on this yeah. and then it overlaps with this. And then it's like, now we have a release calendar so we can talk about this at E3 and like yeah. have this scheduled to go and then blah, 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 blah. CD Projekt is, it doesn't seem to care. And they're, the, they're their own publisher as well, which is mm. super important. So then they go, let's make the best game we can make. They made The Witcher 3, they had to pull in everybody, like you said, mm. finish it. And then they're like, all right, so now let's make the best game we can make again yeah. except sci-fi and now it's going to take and they're like let's you know what let's just not talk about it for three years because we don't need to yeah. like you know what we can do let's just make it and they're going to go do that which is super exciting like um, so i like it is a long time man but we were talking to so them about the witcher 2 and uh, marcia davinsky was saying about how the biggest problem with 2 was that they ran out of money and they ran out of time and that <laughs> yeah. was like a massive problem for and them you can tell because the ending of that game like, they stripped out loads of stuff yeah. as well, uh, whereas Wild Hunt, clearly they had enough time and resources to make this game. Yeah. Hopefully it's doing enough successfully financially-wise across three platforms and a console released a massive deal for them money-wise to give them the time to make a really good cyberpunk game. But it was, it was, another interesting thing about it was when we were doing the interviews, like, some of the interviews were shot in this, like, lovely, like, uh, had, like, swords on the ceiling and, like, a nice brickwork wall, and then it was, like, a media room, and then there was another, another media room, and then there was this other room that was all, like, white, painted, had crazy futuristic... Like, neon, like, or, like, neon lighting on the panels yeah. of the walls all around the side. And I, like, joked at one of the artists and was like, what is this, your cyberpunk room? And he went, yeah. He's like, yeah, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> so they were already prepping. And, like, people were wearing, like, the, the receptionist at the base was wearing a yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 shirt. shirt, and, like, loads of people walking around with them. Um... Mm -hmm. It's, I guess the, the, there was a four-year gap between Witcher 2 and, uh, that was 2011, and, and, and Wild Hunt, which came yeah, out this year. just about four years, yeah. So then, if they announced, uh, well, I guess another four years from now would be 2019. Is that too long to wait for that size of a developer? 150, 200 people? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they'll scale up. I don't know, it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. And then, for, for any kind of smaller developer as well, like... As that game comes out, then you know that they'll be working on whatever their next title will be. Maybe that'll be another Witcher, maybe it'll be something else entirely. But uh, you have to have something that gives all the different teams something to work on. You have, mm. I mean, you have people who only do art and assets yeah. and aren't actually coding and creating these things. 
And so once the game is like fully in process, like they don't have as much to do on the, the game itself. They need to create these worlds that the, the computer rendering guys are going to base it off of, and then the gameplay guys will be able to take that. And so mm. being able to stagger projects gives each of those teams something to do without having to lay off tons yeah. of people. Yeah, that's true. And I wonder, like, the artists seem to get really good at making characters in that medieval fantasy setting. Mm. Yeah, they built they a tool just, for it. They got real, like, you can tell from the first game to the second game to the third game, the, the ramp up is incredible. Mm. Now they have to do that again. Like, can start from the start they again? They have to start from the start yeah. again. Yeah, with a new and a new lore which doesn't yeah. have a sort of a grounding uh, like The Witcher did in in all the in, in all the books. Uh, I guess the last thing to talk about in relation to this, people are kind of bummed out. They're thinking, oh my god. Cyberpunk, we might be able to play it for like years and years and years, but then I guess the flip side of this is that if they're saying that this year and next year are the uh, years of The Witcher, then... Yeah, what does that mean? Th does that mean they're going to just make a bunch of expansion packs that they're going to keep? Because that open world, man, there's a lot of space left on that. Like, right. there are, one of the expansion packs we know is a new area. Does that mean mm -hmm. it's going to be two years? Like, almost Bethesda style of, all right, here we go. Operation, Operation Anchorage, Anchorage. <laughs> all comes back again. Uh, that's an exciting prospect, Justin. Yeah, I think any time that you can get that much out of a game, it, like it's it's exciting for me as, as a consumer that I'm not just buying this game. I'm buying something that's going to last me for the next couple of years. Mm. It's not quite on the scale of of like an MMO, something that lasts me for for ten years, but that I get to play this game now and. It, I don't have to say goodbye to it when I finish it. Yeah. Like maybe I'll get to take a break and try out some other things, and then there's going to be that next expansion that pulls you in and makes it a little bit more fun, pulls out the lore, and makes it more exciting. I, I love it when they do stuff like that mm. for for games that are popular. And I mean, it also means that the game is doing well. Like that tells you, like I made a good investment in this game, and the team and other people have as well. Yeah, and the more people to buy it, then the more I guess they'll they'll plan to support this game because they'll have a bigger user base of people to purchase expansion packs and DLC from. I, a lot of people see that as a as a negative, like as a money grabbing thing. But I, I think in the way that modern games are created, it, it's a necessity. Like to be able to to build games at this scale and for that amount of money, mm. you have to have a plan that's going to stretch out for for at least a year. And as much as you might see like an expansion is, oh, we're not done with the game. We had these ideas, we're not able to put them in, and we're going to charge you extra money for them. Like those are extra things with The Witcher Three and a lot of other games. You have a full experience, and this is literally like Witcher One point or Three Point Five. Yeah. Like it's a it's an additional thing that to me is is worth it in this kind of case. Uh, yeah. Andy, can you confirm that uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven will have botchlings? Oh man, future botchlings. <laughs> future botchlings. Yeah. But I, it could happen. That thing could still happen. People might, you know, just not, not good family the planning. Universe is connected, maybe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cyberpunk. Yeah, it'll be like Red Faction and Saints Continuity. Row. It's all part of the same world. <laughs> Isn't Cyberpunk an established fiction? I think it is. I, I have to actually, I know that. I think they are taking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess it is. Yeah. Huh? Cool. Just taking mm -hmm. it all. I guess we'll have to wait just another couple of years to find <laughs> out. Uh, let us know what you think of Cyberpunk twenty. 77. Let us know what you'll be doing in 2077 when the game comes out on PlayStation 15. I wonder if PlayStation 15 will be. It'll be a 4K. 1080, 60. It'll will be it? a 4K. Baby. You sure? Well, no, no, K. but the game will. Yeah. It'll be real good in 4K. I bet. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll be dead. How's your uh, week going, Andy Ben? Before we close the show, what are you working on this week? Feels like the quiet before the storm. Well, I spent all day taking these notes. You guys want to know how much a 1080p monitor costs? <laughs> yeah, go for it, yeah. So go back. <laughs> all right. So we're talking about all these high numbers, right? Yeah. The, a really kick-ass 1080p <laughs> monitor that's an IPS monitor. Which What's that mean? I, mean, I forgot the, what it means, but it means great. Person it means like vibrant colors, better colors, better mm. uh, blacks, contrast, and all that. Uh, all these panels that we were talking about, the high frame rate and the 4K, yeah. those are TN, Twisted new, Pneumatic. Twisted New Metals. New Metals, something like that. Twisted New Metal? Twisted Pneumatic or something? Is that like a new Linkin Park album? Yeah. But that's those those panels actually have like, so you're getting 4K, <laughs> but the color is actually not quite as oh, good. So you don't want to like yeah. edit video on that. Yeah, of course. Or you don't want to yeah. edit photos on those, even though it's 4K. You don't watch porn on it either. No, you no. want that color. You want to get those pinks right. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> All right. So the, the best 1080p monitor, according to my boy, over at PC Gamer, who does great roundups, $140 to give you a... Really? So, like, you can either spend a bunch of money chasing these crazy high frame rates and high resolutions, or you can spend not a lot of money and get a really good 1080p. Yeah, but, I mean, the monitor by itself is not going to give you 4K. It's not like no, no, no. you don't no, need no, the rest of the shit. Real but you don't need crisp. the rest of the stuff to even do a great 1080. So it's like, it, just to give you a kind of... It's a Bauman tip right there, straight from the source. 
Trust scale, the tips. Baby. The scale is just Alibaba. way off so far. I like it. So you're going to spend the rest of this week <laughs> researching monitors. the rest of this week getting financing on stuff, <laughs> applying for loans so I All can right. build a 2500 4K machine. Yeah, I like it. Just kidding. Good call. Uh, Justin Haywald, what are you up to this we week? We have a, a lot of exciting stuff coming up for E3, and you know, we're just in the, the how, throes of planning. All right, how much stuff uh, can you not talk about yet? How many I things can, this week are you doing are under embargoes? Everything. I is E3 going to be good this year, Justin? No. Oh, why would <laughs> you say that? E3 is going to be hype for E3, dude. It's going to be a lot of games. It sounds like all the stuff that you know that you kind of talk about isn't all the cool stuff yet. I that's don't. All, that's I, what I mean, like. that's the great thing is like E3. There are always so many secrets that even I don't know that there are. Yeah. There are going to be things during those presentations that will light me up. That will be a surprise. Gee, I wonder who knew Brotherhood of Steel, man. Can you think of anything that might be coming uh, happening at E3? Brotherhood of Steel Man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Anything? Uh, if only he could talk in a, did in we a, forget in to, a feminine accent. Do we forget to plug in his power armor? We end forgot to. End the show, Dan. <laughs> okay. I should end the show, Brotherhood of Steel Man? End the show. All right, we're done. Thanks to everyone for watching this week's show. Uh, we got another live stream on tomorrow. Uh, for some reason, we're going to be doing Colin and Greg live for Kind of Funny uh, here on the couch tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. 11 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks to everyone in the back. Mary Kish, Eric Tay, Josh Howell. Who else back there? Is Ty Root back there? No. no. Fuck Ty Root. Intern. Should Jacob. we get the intern out here? Jacob. Get out here, get Jacob. Get out here, intern. Jakey Jacob. Boy. Jacob, the intern, Jakey. is going to be uh, hanging out for the next couple months. Uh, Jacob, the intern. You can just stand behind us and we'll all, uh, yeah, just stand just beside the, right with the painting. Yeah, I'll sit uh, right. Oh, yeah, sit. It, oh, it. oh, he thinks he can get on the it's couch already. Sure. He thinks he can get on the couch. Jacob, uh, uh, thank you very much for, you're not mic'd up, so anything you say is completely irrelevant. Okay. Um, but uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank and, you for uh, the opportunity. It's great. He said, thank you for the opportunity. That's what he said. All right, we're going to wrap up the show. Thank you very much for watching. Jacob will be back next week with all your tips about E3. We're going to load them full of tips. Get up to spew them out here on the show. Uh, but we're done for this week, so go back to playing The Witcher 3. <laughs> Bye!